चैप्टर टू इज मैटर अराउंड अस प्योर नाउ लेट अस ऑब्जर्व सर्टेन थिंग्स विच आर यूज इन द डेली लाइफ लाइक गो टू किचन एंड कलेक्ट सम शुगर एंड स्प्रेड इट ऑन ए पीस ऑफ पेपर एंड ऑल्सो गो टू योर गार्डन एंड कलेक्ट सम सॉइल एंड स्प्रेड इट ऑन ए पीस ऑफ पेपर वट विल यू फाइंड ऑब्जर्व दैम विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए मैग्नीफाइंग ग्लास when you observe sugar and soil with a magnifying glass you find that sugar contains one type of particles all of same size more or less and shape and color when you observe examine soil what do you find you find that it contains clay particles maybe some grass particles some small stones maybe some dead insects are also there so you find the difference on the basis of this we can say it contains a number of particles in it and it contains only one substance that is sugar now when you go to market to with your parents to buy certain grocery etc your parents always insist on buying the things which are pure like salt should be pure pure ghee pure milk now for a common man pure means there should not be any adulteration that is nothing harmful should be mixed other than this milk should contain only milk and not, no not, nothing else nothing harmful in it but are these substances pure these do not contain a single substance they contain Uh, say for example pure milk is a mixture of water fat and proteins so all these substances do not contain a single substance on the basis of these activities we can say that mixture is made up of a number of substances whereas a pure substance contains only one type of substance only single substance single form of matter which cannot be separated into its constituent by physical processes let us say sodium chloride dissolved in water when we dissolve sodium chloride in water it forms a mixture we can separate sodium chloride from water by evaporation water will evaporate leaving behind sodium chloride but can we separate sodium chloride by any of such physical methods no we cannot separate sodium chloride into its constituents by any of this physical processes like filtration like evaporation etc so sodium chloride is a pure substance but sodium chloride dissolved in water forms a mixture so most of the things around us are mixtures like air is a mixture it does not contain only one gas it is a mixture of so many gases like oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen some inert gases like argon sea water is a mixture the soft drinks you are fond of drinking is a mixture cane cane sugar juice is a mixture lemonade is a mixture and so on tap water even tap water is a mixture because it contains some dissolved salts in it now you should know what are different types of mixture by doing certain activities take copper sulfate crystals and dissolve it in water in a beaker or in a test tube and shake it properly to so that copper sulfate mixes in water so what does it form it forms copper sulfate mixture in water it completely dissolves 
कैन यू सी कॉपर सल्फेट और वॉटर सेपरेटली इफ यू परफॉर्म दिस एक्टिविटी इन द लैब यू विल सी योर सेल्फ यू कैन नॉट सी कॉपर सल्फेट और वॉटर सेपरेटली कॉपर सल्फेट कंप्लीटली डिजोल्व इन वॉटर इफ यू डिजोल्व सपोज वन स्पेचुला ऑफ कॉपर सल्फेट इन वन टेस्ट ट्यूब containing about suppose say 5 ml water now take another test tube and in this also take 5 ml water and here dissolve two spatula of copper sulfate crystals and shake it properly to dissolve copper sulfate will dissolve in it but what is the difference in the two the, the there may be a difference in the color this solution will be more strong this solution will be dilute but both will be forming the mixtures in which you cannot see copper sulfate and water separately so this type of mixture is called homogeneous mixture so this first type of mixture is homogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture has uniform composition throughout its mass and there are no visible boundaries of separation between its constituents you cannot see the constituents with the naked eye they are so uniformly mixed you cannot see the constituents and composition is uniform now let us perform another activity to study different types of mixtures like one is this copper sulfate dissolved in water in the other test tube dissolve some chalk powder and water and in the third test test tube take milk dissolved in water shake them properly and keep it for some times and observe now when these solutions copper sulfate solution solution i am using because homogeneous mixtures are also called solution so copper sulfate solution chalk powder uh, in water and milk in water keep if you keep it for some times you will find that nothing settles down in the case of copper sulfate solution copper sulfate does not settle down in the case of chalk powder chalk powder settles down at the bottom of the test tube after some times in the case of milk and water also there nothing has settled down so these are three types of mixtures one is homogeneous mixture copper sulfate dissolved in water now second type is called heterogeneous mixture here the composition is not uniform throughout its mass composition of the constituents is not uniform throughout its mass and there are visible boundaries of separation between the constituents so this is a heterogeneous mixture if you dissolve soil in water it will also form a heterogeneous mixture the composition is not uniform throughout its mass now let us again uh, continue this activity take a filter paper and round filter paper fold it twice it forms a cone like structure fit it in a funnel make it wet with little bit of water and try to filter all these homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture and this mixture of milk and water separately in three test tubes what do you form find when you perform this activity in the lab you will find that 
there is no residue left on the filter paper in the case of copper sulphate solution in water and also in the case of milk and water. But when chalk powder and water are filtered, chalk powder remains here. Chalk powder remains on the filter paper and clear water goes down. Okay. Now, chalk powder is a heterogeneous mixture. Now, what about milk and water? It forms a colloidal solution. It, the particles here also not uniformly distributed, and but particles will not settle down. The particles are very quite small in size. You cannot see them separately. You cannot see milk particles suspended in water with the naked eyes, but with the help of a, a microscope, you can see the particles in water. So, there are three types of mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures and colloidal solutions. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Generally, we think that a solution is a liquid solution in which either a solid or liquid or gas is dissolved in a liquid like uh, sugar dissolved in water or any gas dissolved in water like uh, carbon dioxide gas dissolved in water to form soda water or uh, a liquid dissolved in water like uh, when alcohol is mixed with water it forms a solution. But it is not the case. There can be a liquid solution also, solid solution also or gaseous solution also. Liquid solution you all know, just now we discussed solid solution in which the solids are mixed to form a homo homogeneous mixture like alloys. Now, alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or metals and non-metals in which the composition of the metal metals is uniform throughout its mass. Though the components of alloys cannot be separated by physical processes, but it is a mixture. Alloys have unique properties as compared to the metals. Think of iron as a metal, iron easily rusts, but the alloy of iron that is steel does not rust, its properties change, it does not rust. Another is brass, brass is an alloy of copper, it is a homogeneous mixture of metals, it contains 70 percent copper and 30 percent zinc. Gaseous solutions are also there in which gases are mixed with each other that forms a gaseous solution. For example, air, air is a homogeneous mixture of gases, it contains many gases which are uniformly mixed, it contains about 21 percent oxygen and 78 percent nitrogen and other gases in small amounts like argon etcetera. Now, let us discuss the components of a solution. How is a solution made? What are its various compo components? The component of a solution that dissolves a other component and is always present in large amount is called solvent. So, solvent is in large amount and the component which dissolves in the other component which is present in smaller amount, smaller quantity is called solute. So, in a solution 
that component which is in small amount is called solute and the component which is present in large amount is called solvent. And now let us discuss various examples of solutions. Easily this can be done, dissolve sugar in water. Sugar is a solid, water is a liquid, so it is a solution of solid in water. Tincture of iodine is a medicine which is used to heal a wound and in this case it is uh, iodine is dissolved in alcohol, soda water or any soft drink in which carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in water. Air just now I have told you it is a mixture of various gases like oxygen, nitrogen and inert gases and alloys also I have discussed it is a solid solution which is made by mixing various metals and non-metals. We will discuss now the properties of solution. As we have discussed earlier, solution is a homogeneous mixture which has a uniform composition throughout its mass. Uh, now let us see some other properties of solution. The size of the particles of solution is very small, because solute is dissolved in solvent and the particle size is very small, it cannot be seen by the naked eyes. The diameter of the particles of solution is less than 1 nanometer and what is nanometer? It is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 9 meter. When a beam of light is passed through a solution, it does not scatter the beam of light. Because the particles of solution are so small in size, that is they cannot scatter the beam of light because of its small size. Now if you keep the solution in a test tube or in a beaker for some time undisturbed, the particles of the solution do not settle down and also you cannot separate solute from solvent just by filtration. The solutions are very stable the, and the components of uh, solution cannot be separated by filtration. Now we have performed uh, uh, some activities, we have discussed about some activities in the previous case by dissolving various amount of copper sulphate in water. Like if we uh, take uh, equal volume of water and dissolve in it different amount of copper sulphate. So depending upon the amount of solute and solvent, the concentration of the solution can be varied. Different type of solution can be formed. Dilute and concentrated solutions are made depending upon the upon amount of solute in a solution. If the and it is a comparative thing, dilute and concentrated is a comparative thing. Dilute means solution containing less amount of solute and concentrated means a solution containing more amount of solute dissolved in solvent. Now to study more about the various types of solution, let us discuss an activity which can be performed in the lab. Take sugar and barium chloride and take two beakers and in both the beakers take equal volume of water say about 50 ml of water, dissolve sugar in one beaker and barium chloride in another beaker and stir them continuously with the help of a glass rod to dissolve. It is found that as you add sugar it keeps on dissolving in first beaker, in the other beaker add barium chloride it will dissolve at room temperature. 
Now, first of all, see that uh, bo both cases equal amount of uh, the solids are dissolving or different amounts of uh, solids are dissolving in water. A stage comes continuously keep on dissolving, a stage comes when no more solid can dissolve and solid starts settling down and even on stirring with the glass rod it does not dissolve. At this stage the solution formed is called saturated solution. A saturated solution is that solution in which no more solute can be dissolved. Even on stirring, it cannot dissolve at a particular temperature. Temperature is very important. At a particular temperature, we cannot dissolve any more solute in the solvent. Then it forms a saturated solution. Now heat it. Heat the first beaker and then the second beaker, what you find? On heating, what happens? Some more sugar can be dissolved and similar is the case in some more barium chloride can be dissolved. So, it means by heating we can dissolve more of the solid. Some more heating can be done, some more solid can be dissolved. Now, cool this liquid, what happens? On cooling what will happen? Some of the solid will settle down, some, some solid will settle down, will become undissolved by cooling. So, this gives an idea about the solubility. What is solubility? Solubility is the amount of solute present in a saturated solution at a particular temperature. So, you have seen that solubility uh, increases with increase in temperature. The solubility uh, always uh, should be measured at a uh, particular temperature because it increases with increase in temperature. And what is an unsaturated solution? Unsaturated solution is that solution in which we can dissolve solute. The solution before the saturation lev level is reached that is called unsaturated solution which can dissolve more amount of solute in it. Now, different amount of uh, solute are dissolved in different uh, amount of solvent. So, uh, we should know about the concentration of solution by uh, dividing amount of solute upon uh, with the amount of solution we can find out the concentration of solution or we can find out the concentration of solu solution by dividing the amount of solute with amount of solvent. There are various ways of finding the concentration of solution, but in this class we will study only the two methods finding out the percentage by mass by mass percentage or mass by volume percentage of a solution, mass of solute upon mass, mass of solution into 100 and mass by volume percentage of solution will be mass of solute upon volume of solution into 100. So, this gives an idea of about the concentration of the solution. Dissolve chalk in water and see if it dissolves. You will see that chalk particles do not dissolve in water and uh, can be seen with the uh, naked eye in the mixture. The composition is also not uniform throughout its mass, it forms a heterogeneous mixture. Same thing will happen if soil is dissolved in water. So, this uh, type of heterogeneous mixture is known as suspension. Now, what is a suspension? It is a heterogeneous mixture in which the composition is not uniform throughout its mass and the particles of suspension are quite big in size and we can see the particles of a suspension by the naked eyes. 
if a beam of light is passed through a suspension it will scatter the beam of light because the particles of suspension are big enough to scatter a beam of light and path of light becomes visible through the suspension. If you keep the suspension that is uh, uh, say suspension of chalk in water in a test tube undisturbed for some times you will find that chalk particles settle down at the bottom. Suspension is unstable and you can filter it also. You can separate chalk and water by filtering it through a filter paper. Chalk particles will remain on the filter paper and clear water will be separated. Also in the activity we had seen that uh, when milk is dissolved in water it forms a colloidal solution. It appears to be homogeneous but actually it is not a homogeneous mixture, it is a heterogeneous mixture, it is a colloidal solution. Mist, smoke are other examples of colloidal solution and after this we will study some more examples of colloidal solution. Now let us discuss about the properties of a collide. Collide appears to be, colloidal solution appears to be a homogeneous mixture, but it is not a homogeneous mixture, it is a heterogeneous mixture, it does not have uniform composition throughout its mass. And the particles of colloidal solution are very, very small in size. We cannot see the particles of a colloidal solution by the naked eyes. And when a beam of light is passed through a colloidal solution, its path becomes visible because the particles of colloidal solution are big enough to scatter the beam of light and this scattering of light is known as Tyndall effect. It is named after the scientist who discovered it. You must have seen the light coming into a dark room through a window. The dust particles scatter the beam of light and show Tyndall effect. Also you can see the Tyndall effect in a dense forest which uh, in which the trees form a canopy like structure and when the sunlight passes through it, the mist present over there, the water droplets act as collide suspended in air and scatter the beam of light and show Tyndall effect. When you keep a colloidal solution taken in a test tube or a beaker for some times, nothing settles down. Colloidal solutions are very stable. The colloidal particles do not settle down on keeping for some times. And if you want to filter the colloidal particles by a filter paper, it cannot be done. If you filter milk uh, solution through a filter paper, you, you will find no residue over the filter paper, it will pass through the filter paper. Of course, colloidal particles can be separated by centrifugation in which the colloidal solution is rotated at a very high speed. In that case, the colloidal particles can be separated. Let us solve one example to find out the concentration of a solution in terms of mass by mass percentage. Uh, 40 gram of common salt is dissolved in 320 grams of water. So, mass of uh, solute is mass of solute is 40 grams and what is the mass of solution? So, we have to add these two. To find out the mass of solution, 40 plus 320 that is 360 gram. So now you know the formula, mass by mass percentage is mass by mass percentage that is concentration or we can say concentration of solution in terms of percentage. is equal to 40 upon 360 into 
100. So, it comes out to be 11.1 percent. So, you can find out the concentration in terms of mass by mass percentage and if the volume of uh, solution or solvent is given then mass by volume percentage also can be found. The components of a colloidal solution are the dispersed phase and the dispersion dispersing medium. Now, let us see what is uh, uh, dispersed phase and what is dispersing medium. Now, the component uh, which uh, dissolves which contains the dispersed phase is called dispersing medium and the solute like particles or the colloidal particles uh, are called dispersed phase. Now, depending upon the state of dispersed phase and the dispersing medium, the colloidal solution can be classified into solid, liquid and gases. So, now with the help of this table you can go through some common examples of collides and try to memorize uh, the examples of the colloidal solutions and uh, also read thoroughly and try to memorize. Now, you can see depending upon the physical state of dispersed phase and dispersing medium there are different types of collides and the examples are also given. Dispersed phase is liquid, dispersing medium is gas, type is aerosol and the example is fog, clouds, mist. Solid in gas forms aerosol, examples smoke, automobile, exhaust. Gas in liquid forms foam, example is shaving cream, liquid in liquid forms emulsion, example is milk, face cream, solid in liquid forms sol, example milk of magnesia and mud, gas in solid forms foam, example is foam, rubber, sponge, pumice, liquid in solid forms gel, examples are jelly, cheese, butter, solid in solid forms solid, sol, examples are colored, gemstone and milky glass. So, try to memorize these examples of collide to learn more about the colloidal solutions. You should also know about the solubility. We uh, learnt to how to make a saturated solution. Now, what is solubility? Solubility is the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at a particular temperature. So, temperature is very important to calculate solubility. With the help of an example, let us uh, understand more about solubility. This example says 12 gram of potassium sulphate can be dissolved in 75 grams of water say about 20 degree centigrade. Now, find out the solubility. Now, according to this form, uh, definition, we can calculate the solubility 75 grams of water dissolves 12 grams potassium sulphate. Now, the solubility is the amount of potassium sulphate dissolved in 100 grams. So, we can calculate it by writing 100 grams here, 100 grams will dissolve how much of potassium sulphate and we will get 12 upon 75 into 100 and we get 60, 16 grams 
at 20 degree centigrade. So, solubility of potassium sulphate is 16 grams at 20 degree centigrade. So, temperature must be mentioned while expressing the solubility of a substance.